Hello. Hello. I'm Alex. And I'm Val. And we're here on take two of the fleshy part of the thigh because our recording software decided to stop working today. Yeah, and now we're using um, a tiny little microphone thing. Yeah, so hopefully you can't tell the difference, but this is all in the interest of us preserving getting this episode out, (laughs) which was already tough because we were supposed to be ahead of ourselves and we're really... uh, we're really flying by the seat of our pants in 6A, so... Things have been good. pretty busy. The raptors have been... <laughs> it's been very hard to do this amongst the raptors doing as well as they are. Yeah. It's been very hard for us. Um, my dad's getting married this weekend. Yeah, we, yeah. We just have a lot, we There's have a lot. going on. Um, yeah. But we want to get this episode out, so... So now we're going to record on a tiny microphone, and I'll figure it out later. And you're, I guess the music's probably just about done now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're going to talk about the fleshy part of the thigh We today. are. Um, and it'll be hard to keep up because our first episode that we were recording was so excellent, but nobody will ever know. We were kind of on a roll. It's like a secret. Um, we'll do our best. We'll try. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll be it'll good. Be maybe you guys better. will actually appreciate it because it actually gives us a second to um, think Organize out. our thoughts. Sorry, I shouldn't speak for Alex, but at least for myself to uh, think out my thoughts before I say them out loud. But Right. We'll see. Probably won't make that big of a difference. I'm still pretty scattered. Well, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. Um, I think that these, like the first four episodes of this season are some of the most memorable episodes, or at least like for me, like the Kevin Finnerty Mm -hmm. storyline really takes us to this interesting place. Like in terms of like the arc of, you know, this end game of the series, It really takes us to an interesting place because it starts us off with these huge existential questions for ourselves, but also, you know, through Tony as kind of like our proxy in the world to like deal with these big questions of who am I and where am I going and like, what does it all mean? Yeah. Right. Like, um, and so we have this episode as kind of. I mean, I feel like it's almost like a cliffhanger. Like, we we end this episode wondering, like, okay, like, Tony's had this whole weird purgatory-like experience or whatever you want to call it. Now what? Right. Right? Like, he ends the episode talking to Janice, saying, like, now every every day is a gift now. Right. And squeezing her hand. Um, We have him, you know, engaging people like Polly and Christopher in these... Um, conversate like these conversations about um, kind of their perception on the world right and how they look at things and you know like with Christopher saying like about the postage stamp on top of the Empire State Building thing yeah. right and um, so we don't know what's gonna happen um, I don't know what we're gonna do in terms of if we gonna, if we're gonna do a season 6a summary and a season 6b summary if we're gonna look at season 6 kind of as one entity but for those of you who have seen the rest of season six, mm-hmm. I really, I, I'm really kind of enjoying thinking about this moment as kind of like a turning point and seeing how that's going to impact everything going forward towards the end of the show. Right. Um, I also think this episode gives us a lot of insight into the show as a whole. Um, kind of the ideas and the issues that David Chase set out to... Um, no, discuss is the wrong word to like examine, examine or yeah, enlighten us on kind of. Um, and it also, yeah, it's also just like really, I mean, it's really, really deep symbolic television Mm -hmm. and I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I feel like in this episode that those central questions of who am I, where am I going are really expanded on through a cast of an ensemble of characters and we really get to see various different understandings of those existential questions and actions that lead characters to different places and ways of dealing with the world. And I just think that there's so many characters that represent different approaches in this episode mm-hmm. specifically. Pastor Bob being this kind of evangelical approach. We have Polly. We have Tony, obviously. We have John Schwinn, who's a really interesting character who's representing more of a 
kind of scientific approach mm. also but which, also which isn't that dissimilar though from like a buddhist approach that we were exposed right. to it's scientific but it's it's yeah. also kind of this yeah everything is everything yeah this kind of universal approach that is is very interesting and i think actually kind of summarizes maybe the approach that the creators of the show have had and the way that they've curated the show having all this connection we've been constantly dealing with these questions in a way that the characters within the show maybe haven't because mm-hmm. they don't see things that way. Well, things are also, much more black and white. Yeah, and we're also forced, like, you know, David Chase and the team force us to deal with our own perception, like our own nature that um, that feels really comfortable defining things as black and white or good and bad or right. um, heaven and hell. That's even right. like brought up by Schwinn in the episode, right? Like, yeah. you have to, like, get rid of these dualities. And I think that, like, for me, when I talk about The Sopranos, and, and now we have a lot more shows with anti-heroes, mm-hmm. um, and we didn't really have that many before Sopranos, but, yeah. like, when I talk to people who have never seen The Sopranos, I think that's one of the things that, like, I really talk about is that it really makes me question the things that I just like think I know to be true and to try not to categorize things as black and white and try to like you know see the nuances absolutely um yeah so we like we get to kind of like live this through the characters like see how they're see how they grapple with it and then by you know by proxy see how we grapple with it yeah absolutely and it's interesting because we actually have like almost diametrically opposed viewpoints like we have john schwinn who rejects the dualities of good and evil and then we have pastor bob who rejects the scientific proof that dinosaurs (laughs) existed you know yeah long before humans did and i I like chris's thing where he's like we couldn't have lived at the same time as dinosaurs like adam and eve they would be running all the time it's supposed (laughs) to be paradise (laughs) there you go proof sealed yeah (laughs) Like the Flintstones? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But it's really fascinating because I think that Pastor Bob represents this character who talks about his past, how he was addicted to cocaine, to strippers, he crashed his car, and he turned his life around. How, based on prayer and maybe a belief in, I guess, Catholicism? No, No. not Catholicism. Okay. That's the thing. Like, so they... We have a quick moment with our... um, father yeah father phil um but it's it is supposed to also be opposed like uh, in opposition to to, Catholic, to our catholic character interesting well. so do we yeah. know which christian like an evangelical was? christian okay. I, would, I would say yeah well like, that's interesting like, because yeah. it really does kind of embody this idea of rebirth totally. like he is reborn and we have this moment where tony could be reborn and i think it's also it's really fascinating because it's very opposed to the ideas that the Buddhists in the Kevin Finnerty world were kind of putting out there. Yeah. And this idea of everything is everything is very much the opposite of this is exactly what things are. We believe in prayer, throwing yourself into belief, throwing yourself into these these Christian beliefs maybe of like anti-evolution, anti-science. It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit dogmatic when it actually mm-hmm. starts to be revealed. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, some of his statements like evolution and salvation are mutually exclusive, which makes him mutually exclusive with the scientist, which I found is really is really interesting. Yeah. He talks about John Schwinn, even though he doesn't know him, saying that man is not saved. So there's this idea maybe of being saved and seeing the world as a interconnected space as being mutually exclusive Mm -hmm. i thought it was interesting too when he talks about he brings this book from colson from from watergate and this idea of him achieving salvation this criminal is really interesting for this idea of tony soprano him bringing the idea of salvation is possible but also that that is something that is desirable and a positive evolution for his character it's interesting to think about colson as as somebody who is involved in the actions that he was he engaged in around Watergate, mm-hmm. but then also the beliefs that you can maybe save yourself from everything that you've done through buying into these beliefs. Right. And that is one way of navigating the world because they've really put out such a complicated, difficult to navigate universe throughout the series of Sopranos. And that's one way of maybe dealing with the evil or 
or badness or harm that's put out in the world yeah. through your actions. Well, it's really different from Catholicism, right? So we see, like I said, we see Father Phil for a second, but we deal with this a lot in this in this episode in particular. We've dealt with it in past episodes before, but through Polly and his birth mother, right, mm-hmm. slash his aunt. Right. And the thing like and he, you know, uh, when Nucci then says, like, she's going to have to go to St. Peter and like put her like put her sins out there on the table, basically. Yeah. Right. And in Catholicism, there is not there's not this concept of being born again. Right. That we have an evangelical Christian, Christian belief. There's more of this belief of, you know, like that. um someone more powerful than you, like a priest, for example, or, you know, God is able to absolve you of your sins and that we're all sinners and that like, you know, you're, so you're working to right. um, do penance for right. your sins rather than them being kind of just like washed away. Right. That it's something that you actually have to like atone for. Right. And I, and I think like tying back into last episode also where we had that whole concept of like someone needs to take responsibility. Yes. Um, I think that's kind of an important part of Tony's psyche who was raised Catholic, right? Who like kind of, you know, I think if we had to position him and, you know, Carmela anywhere, they would be kind of closer on that end of the spectrum. Um, That this is this kind of position where it's hard to then, like if you see the world in such a black and white way and you've seen it like that for your whole life, uh, it's really hard to see things from a different perspective, right? So to go from things are black and white to... Um, you know, there's, we're all just like the tree, no, you know, me, mm-hmm. um, is huge. Yeah. Right. That would, that's like a huge kind of personal growth if you want to put yeah. it that way. Yeah. And I think another interesting thing, um, with Catholicism specifically is, uh, Polly's aunt Dottie who represents is another representation of that belief system, um, as a nun and also kind of like the responsibility that she takes for the lies that she had Mm -hmm. uh, navigating that as a Catholic, the kind of untruths and being a bad girl, exactly being a bad girl. Yeah. But it's interesting because she has navigated the world through the lens of Catholicism. And now she is in a moment like Tony where she's dealing with these larger questions and this is how she's dealing with it. But obviously Catholicism is kind of breaking down because well, in some ways, she actually kind of diverted her responsibility by not responding to this or putting the information out there. Like now, mm-hmm. but on her deathbed, she feels like she is forced to come clean about these yeah. issues, right? Like she wants to go to wherever she imagines that she's going, mm-hmm. right? With this clearness, with yeah. this like you know, like like she. I think she is kind of taking responsibility for it, right? By telling. But she'll still have to go meet the saint or whatever. Saint Peter, yeah. Saint Peter. He's at the gates <laughs> and he opens them or not. Seems like it's going to be tough. Um, yeah, it's it's like it's there's a lot, right? Because then we we also have um, we also have the rappers, right? Deluxe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and they're kind of also dealing with these like issues of morality and, and things, identity and identity, right? Like. Um, as artists um, and as like you know people in in popular culture right like right like what it, who like who are you who are you and where are you going yeah um, so we just have so many different viewpoints going on and I think like what these writers are so good at doing are helping us see the connectivity between these characters yeah. and how like, how sometimes they like we have these kind of like overlapping viewpoints, you know, like we have with, you know, maybe Schwinn, who's very scientific Mm -hmm. and the Buddhist monks, for example, who both have this kind of concept that, um, everything is everything. And like, we're just a big stew of molecules or whatever. Um, but they, but they also have differences in in their viewpoints too. Right. And, And likewise, like, yeah, Catholicism and evangelical Christian Christianity, are going to have some overlap, right. but there are these areas also where they, where they differ. And so right. it really allows us to see, um, 
yeah, just like really explore yeah. those issues. I love the scene where they're watching the game in the hospital because you see mm-hmm. Deluxe and his entourage. You see John Schwinn. You see Tony. You see these, and you see Polly. Polly. Yeah, he you says see. We're all alone in the ring. Exactly. So I mean, for me, that was kind of like embodying his attitude and philosophy about life. And it's interesting because you know he talks about later on in the episode, basically his life is a joke. I am not who I am. So he's facing similar issues of identity as mm-hmm. Tony at this moment. And he's kind of figuring out how he can navigate the world if he's not who he is. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting to see him who's had that philosophy of we're all alone in the ring compared to John Trin, who's basically saying the opposite. Saying we are all in the, in ring. the ring. Everybody and is the in ring, the ring. The, the ring is infinity. The ring. Yeah. <laughs> the ring is an infinity. Mm. All people are. Have infinity. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Compared to, you know, the deluxe. And then we have Tony kind of being a sponge at this point, And no, we don't really even know what his philosophy is anymore. Because we feel like he could be at this crossroads where he could be changing. Well, clearly, like, there is something about the wind that is speaking to Tony. That's a huge part of this episode. And we were, like, as we were watching, um, we were both talking about, like, that, that Ojibwe slash... Ojibwe, as Tony calls it, uh, saying, it always, like, I always remember, like, I always, like, can recall it, but I think, like, in this viewing, it's making a lot more sense to me, Mm -hmm. especially, like, the way that Tony retells it many times, too, like, he kind of, what's the word, what's the word where you, like, like, as a malapropism, I Mm -hmm. guess, like, because he was, like, and the wind is always behind you, pushing you. Mm. He's, I, I, I should have written down exactly how he said it. Right. I was quite tired when we were watching this episode. <laughs> but, um, you know, he kind of then takes his own interpretation of that. But we certainly have a lot of references to wind in this episode. And a lot of... Yes. Um, we see a lot of wind. Yeah. And so there is this aspect of, like, you know, the wind is, like, we're all just, like, the wind is kind of passing over all of us, and the wind is kind of, like, flowing. It flows between everything. Right. Um, but also the idea when it's specifically talked about by John Twin, this idea of tornadoes. Mm-hmm. Two tornadoes are the same. It's an illusion mm-hmm. that the wind would be these separate things. And this is obviously tying into the symbolism and themes that they've had throughout the entire show. I mean, we've seen wind rustling through mm-hmm. trees going back to college. Mm-hmm. Um and obviously, I think this episode is as direct as the show will ever be in terms of basically saying these themes are really the core of what we're, what the purpose of this show is at this mm-hmm. moment. It's it's really about the things under the level. So Yeah, well, and it, it's not like they're not definitive about what those things mean, and nor is but that really the it's point. It's definitely our focus is yes. brought to these yes. themes in, in a more direct way yeah. than it typically is. I mean, that's well, saying... Well, like pay attention. Yeah. And it's the same with the bells, right? We talked about this a little yeah. bit last episode. Um, it's like, pay attention when, when these things happen, right. There's something going on. Right. Right. It's, we talked about it last episode, like it's marking something. We had a lot of bells in this episode, Mm. um, more bells than beeps and dings, you know, like than we had in the past two episodes, like with elevator sounds and things like that. Yeah. Here we really have bells. And I think like, um, yeah, it's like pay attention. There also mm-hmm. there's also this like religious connotation to them, um, but for me the wind I don't know the wind is this kind of like omnipresent thing, right? Like even when yes. it's still, there is always wind, and it it flows through everything, right? And a tornado and wind, a tornado and a breeze are the same thing. Yeah, it's all the same. Right. That, that saying, the, the Ojibwe saying, is really just stated so clearly in this episode, too. There's so much focus on it. Um, that shot sometimes... where it's beside Tony's bedside. Yeah, I mean, really, the fact that we're yeah. getting entire shots of just that with yeah. Tony. In fact, the first time we see it, sometimes I go about in pity for myself. And all the while, a great wind carries me across the sky. There's actually a note that's still in the frame that says, for you, mm. in Tony's room. That they actually chose to put there. So it's, it's interesting because it's... For Tony, but it's also for, for, us, for us as the too, viewer. Yeah. And I guess it does kind of reinforce that connectivity and it, it is applying to everyone. We've always kind of been looking through the eyes of Tony kind of as like a narrator, but this is really equally applying to everyone. And that's kind of the point right now is that everyone is being impacted. Everybody is navigating this complicated world. Everybody is dealing with existential questions and it's complicated for everyone, even though we're just most heavily invested in the way Tony deals with it. Mm -hmm. And there's 
infinite complexity to the way all these characters are dealing with it, what they're experiencing, and it's equally valid. We just don't have the time to get into all of it. Our, our reference point is just through kind of this one protagonist. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but what's he going to do? Like, what's he going to do with this information? That's the question. Right? Um, you know, again, we kind of go back to the question that we've asked all along watching this series is like, um, like, what is, is there another possibility for Tony Soprano? Like, if we think in terms of kind of like, again, like existential questions, yeah. like fate and yeah um and destiny and the and those type of ideas right like is is it possible that there's someone like the other tony soprano who became kevin finnerty yeah <laughs> um can that exist for tony is there some other way like so even if he does delve deep into all these questions that he's asking yeah does that change anything for him? Is it possible for him to change? Right. Um, I mean, just within the context of this episode, at the very end, we have him in front of the paramedic who's offering him money, and he says, let's go, and he doesn't yeah. take it. So if you're just viewing it through this episode, it would seem that is an action that is different, and perhaps suggesting that Tony is stepping down a new route, and he's going somewhere different, because we haven't seen him do anything like that before. No. So even like to his very good friends in really dark moments of their lives. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, and it's and then right after when he says that line that you referenced mm-hmm. from now on every day is a gift. Janice's response is just kind of yeah, looking down. She doesn't really accept this new philosophy. We'll go get the car. Like it immediately kind of returns to the mundane everyday activities. There's no yeah. kind of appreciation of this new way of looking at things well and i think that goes back to also like looking at livia's viewpoint on the world right because tony and janice and i mean maybe barbara like we said last episode we don't know what is going on inside barbara's psyche and in her world but definitely we know for tony and for janice that they are constantly dealing with things in the like with the context of how they were raised surrounding them right um, which I think that, like I was saying before, kind of like linking in with like religious beliefs and things like that, like really like trying to shift those things that are so ingrained in you from birth, yeah, right, is really, really challenging. And so for Livia, like to get for like there was a big nothing, right? It wasn't everything is everything. Yeah, it was there's nothing. It's all a big nothing. Yeah, right. Um, which and, is another viewpoint which kind of pervades over everything but isn't really represented in this episode in all these kind of different ways of navigating the world no, that clearly no. in terms of like that's maybe the complete opposite of John Schwinn everything is everything it's all a big nothing mm-hmm. well there's just kind of, I don't know like in some ways it's it's the sa- it's like the same like whether it's ev- whether it's everything is everything or everything is nothing right um, there kind of is still this concept of like of connection that like, like right. to be nothing together means that mm. you're the, sa- the same in some right. way like if everything is nothing right. then everything is also right everything that's still shared <laughs> um, yeah uh, and he talks about like Schrodinger's equation yeah. Yeah. right like and so you know like the key you know like he talks a little bit more about the equation but like you know it makes me think of Schrod- Schrodinger's box yeah right so if there's a cat in a box mm-hmm. And if you open the box, the cat dies. But do you know if the cat's dead if you don't open the box? Hold on to that thought for Made in America, season 6B. <laughs> <laughs> when we see a cat. When we see a cat. Um, yeah, hold on for Made in America just generally. Yeah, I think it's, it is a really important episode. And actually some of these ideas like are actually giving clarity to themes that we've had for the whole show. But also introducing kind of a clear new theme for for the kind of end of the series. And yeah, and I think that idea of Schrodinger's equation is one of them. I think that's something that will be referenced later. So it is important, and it's worth kind of holding on to John Schwinn as a character, as small of a part as he has in this episode. I think he's very important. Yeah. And who is that actor? Ah, famous guy who I, I forget. Know. I did know on he's a previous amazing. viewing. Researched it, didn't research it he's this amazing. time because... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it's interesting how we have Tony, this is just like, you know, I'm just thinking out loud, uh, how we have Tony not saying goodbye to him. Mm-hmm. Like Tony, so we have Tony, and this is part, like I, I guess I kind of like 
glazed over in past viewing because I do get so caught up in these like like you know breaking down who represents what and the wind and the trees and like which I love I love doing that yeah. but like there was these weird moments in this episode where Tony goes and he's watching in the burn unit he's watching this little mm-hmm. girl who has 80% of her body right. burnt um, and he's really like moved by like and he's telling Polly about it and then we have him like look in on this couple who you know Schwinn's just had his larynx removed and his you know assuming his wife is sitting there with him Mm -hmm. um and Tony can't even go and say goodbye to this person who he's like spent some time with and he like seems to like you know um and so that part was interesting to me in this episode I didn't quite know what to make of it Mm -hmm. but yeah um the other perspective we have actually is Hesh being around. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the other one that we missed that kind of represents Judaism and, and mm-hmm. their take on these issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, I guess the idea that the Messiah is coming, you know, and he's around at, the, at moments of where Christian, Christian views are kind of being shown. And then we see that there's also another kind of religious, spiritual alternative that's mm-hmm. also very different from, from Buddhism, but another way of navigating right. the world. Well, we also have kind of this additional scientific viewpoint, right, with the, I mean, you know, represented on one side by Pastor Bob um, when we're talking about dinosaurs. But we have these moments earlier in the episode where they're talking about, like, dino- like this evidence that was uncovered that in the soft tissue of mm-hmm. dinosaur... Um, fossilized, yeah. Fossilized... Fossilized T-Rexes found in Montana. Yeah, that they're related to birds. Right. right, which also backs up a shot where they actually change from the dinosaur book to birds yeah. where, at the sanitation grounds. Um, and I think, like, I think that's why, like, I kind of, like, for me, like, Buddhist and scientific viewpoints do kind of exist in, yeah. um, I don't know, in harmony with each other in some ways. Because for me, that is, again, like, that concept, like, we're all, like, it, everything's connected and we're all the tree and, yeah. Um, and yeah, everything is everything. Um, yeah. And for us, it is in this show because there's yeah. always been these points of connection yeah. and everything has always related to everything else because it's been curated for us. Yes. And so now they're kind of just applying that approach and that level of connection to the world at large in a kind of philosophical sense outside mm-hmm. of the confines of this show. So that's where it kind of starts to make a broader statement. Mm-hmm. We also do have people in this episode dealing with like being sons and being parents, mm-hmm. like in some ways too, because we do have this whole Jason Barone um, sanitation right. um, issue going on, which I always gasp like, even though end. I knew it was coming, yeah. I knew that what Polly was going to do to him, and I was like, <gasps> like it was just yeah. like it's so awful, right? Be- well, it's and- particularly awful after Polly had this kind of emotional breakdown from hearing Jason's mom, yeah, saying that like she just can't bear anything to happen to her son, and then he, his reflection Extorts on that him, is to extort and- him and and actually hurt him. Yeah. So I mean, in terms of thinking of okay, well, if this is a turning point on a crisis for 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 Polly Polly, how does he act on that and that's how he acts on it it's Mm -hmm. like the darkest possible yeah instead of and Tony's the one who kind of says to him like how many times did your mom bail you out of the can like she obviously cares about you and whatever and he he's black and white yeah well and Tony's even saying he's trying to kind of give him this broader perspective he says you are part of something bigger yeah he's giving him some of this John Schwinn perspective yeah and Polly is just like the ultimate you know, black and white, good and bad, yeah, self benefit kind of New Jersey mobster. Yeah, and he becomes maybe a new level of that by the end of the episode. Yeah. So there's definitely an evolution of character for Polly in this episode. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. I, like, I mean, it's inter- like again, like just the writing in this show is just spectacular all the time. But like, you know, we we go with Polly through most of the series with him being relatively the same right even though he like like he goes through his experience like in pine barrens for example yeah. right like we don't really see polly coming out on the other side of those events as any different than he was before he's pretty like mm-hmm. stable as a character yeah um 
you know, we get we ha- he has his quirks. We see him grappling with you know like ghosts and ghosts and, and his idea of purgatory <laughs> being like babies Poor with guy. floating heads or whatever. Right. Like what, I forget what his right. Um, but we see him here like experiencing this like huge shift. And so again, like I was saying, like you know how enormous it is to kind of like change your viewpoint from the thing that you believed mm-hmm. to something entirely different. Um, so is that with Polly, you know, like that's a huge shift. And I think we have like, we're setting off this season with seeing these characters really move in these ways that, um, are surprising. So early. Yeah. And also moving in these ways where they're almost devolving, Mm -hmm. where they have an opportunity for real growth and they choose the, I wonder, I wonder what Tony will choose. I wonder too. Yeah. I don't know because this is the first time I'm watching yeah. this show. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's interesting to think about. It's interesting. Yep. And then to like look at that and everything is stemming from this experience. Because I think like, you know, we, we've, we've been with Tony in these moments also where like we're like that that's going to be the thing that kind of like changes him, mm-hmm. right? Like whether it was like, Ugh, like breaking up with Carmela or whether it was his mom dying or, um, you know, having those crazy dreams that he had or pussy right. dying or whatever. Yeah. Like we're always like, you know, we, we can see how they impact him. Mm-hmm. And then he somehow just seems to like settle back into this equilibrium and, mm-hmm. and settle back into what he always has been. Yeah. Um, so it is interesting to kind of like, yeah, look at then where that leads him. His totally. dream about his coach, you know, like we yeah. we had high hopes for, for him mm-hmm. there. Yeah. The other character too, she doesn't have that much time in this episode, but is Carm and this idea where she's telling Tony like Vito is someone you should watch. Yeah. I think that package was light. So that also kind of like represents like a material approach to the world and a value mm-hmm. system. Which would be counter to a Buddhist yeah. viewpoint also. Yeah, because Carmel is one who was earlier in in the season, you know, she was just saying to them like, oh, like, we don't need that. Like, don't worry about it. Like, that is the least of our concerns. And now when Tony's awake, she's actually, while Tony is recovering in the hospital, she's saying like, I think they didn't give us, they didn't kick up enough to the boss. So like, that's very involved in the finances of the mob. And also talking about being complicit in Mm -hmm. the last episode, like what could be more complicit in the illegal financial activity than that? Yeah. So that's revealing, too, for her as a character. Yeah. I think that's actually, it's very quick, but maybe another de-evolution of her. Mm-hmm. We also have another to. character who doesn't get a ton of screen time, but the insurance person. Right. <laughs> insurance person. Um, who he calls a nasty C-word. Yeah, he sure does. Um, and a bird of prey. Um, Birds. She Dinosaurs. like she's also like for her it's all about the bottom line yeah. too right like if you think about like healing and what it means mm-hmm. in, in the context of like emotional healing right or, or physical healing um, like what that looks like to mm-hmm. different people and, and how that can be really different mm-hmm. so um, there's actually something interesting too that shot that I was referencing earlier from the dinosaur book to the birds mm-hmm. the sanitation one of the very first shots if not actually the first shot of the entire episode is that monster in front of the mm-hmm. scuba shop like a monster kind of as a human wearing this scuba gear for me it was actually kind of related to that edit and that idea of like dinosaurs birds humans connection like kind of this like this this monster in human form mm. that's kind of there and actually mm. kind of like starts off the episode and yeah, maybe yeah. is connecting another point of connection of like dinosaurs humans I mean it's a bit of a stretch but that Mon- is monsters monsters but it is but it's like we do have monsters we have people continually becoming more and more monstrous Mm. and actually that's how they kind of frame the beginning of the episode that's how we're introduced to it so i thought i thought it was at a minimum an important and definitely and uh you know it was a thought that it was a shot that was kind of thought out and -hmm. and presented for a reason Mm -hmm. um yeah what else do we have there's a lot there's a lot. There's a lot in this episode. I wish I could remember the things that we set out to talk about the first time we did this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's what happens. We we have this whole... I mean, we do have this whole storyline around the negotiations for the Barone yeah. um, waste management mm-hmm. 
company, right, with Bill Leotardo and Johnny Sack, who's still in jail. Um, yeah, this idea that there's, that Tony says, the truth be told, there's enough garbage for everybody. Yeah. For me, that was actually kind of another philosophy yeah. that maybe is the most accurate in kind of portraying the way Tony and the mob see the world. That there's enough garbage. Like, that's been associated to their kind of... They've said, but garbage is our bread and butter. Mm. Like, that they're living, their finances But would they say garbage. garbage is... There's enough garbage for everybody? I don't know. That's rare. It, yeah. That's almost like a modified stance coming from John Schwinn and the Buddhists. Yeah. But the idea that the world is kind of... That you can prosper off of garbage mm -hmm. is very related to the way mm -hmm. the mafia kind of interacts with mm -hmm. the world. Um... That's an interesting one, too. Like, this Barone, Cinelli, the violence. That that fact that, um, you know, there's, there's like, statements like Barone roots are now Cinelli roots. It's that very kind of, like, black and white way of responding to conflict. And I feel like that also represents one of the kind of worldviews. It's, like, the most emphatic mafia-based, like, this is this. And it's emphatic and decisive mm -hmm. and violent mm -hmm. and actually there's a cut from there basically i think to tony with the ojibwe saying like it's right there's a relationship between that violence and tony and that wind i think is connecting them and i think that that connective tissue is really what's being flushed out in this episode because everything is connected and we've talked about collateral damage before but that father and his son, who is beat up, is connected to Tony in that moment. Yeah. You know, feeling sorry for himself, perhaps. Yeah. But there, there's others who are being damaged by his actions. Um, there's some interesting things, like, around that little storyline. Um, Johnny Sack, kind of, like, minor character, but, like, we see him. There's a shot starting on a cigarette. There's a lot of cigars, actually, in this episode. Bobby has a cigar at one point, and that actually cuts to Syl with asthma. Breathing in and on an inhaler. And for me, that was actually kind of like the Bobby to Sill. Like, they were actually connected in that moment. The way that you saw Bobby in, ingesting smoke, going to Silvio, kind of like dealing with his lungs mm -hmm. and inability to mm -hmm. breathe. This also, like, as a symbol of control and power that we've talked about a lot. Obviously, Johnny Sack is very out of control with the cigarette. Um Bobby is more in control in that moment. He actually is able to kick up more to Tony in the end through the way that he engages with Deluxe and, and his crew. Mm -hmm. But Silvio, I just thought I liked the way that Bobby was connected to Silvio and it actually kind of like reinforced the, yeah. that connective tissue there. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the big moment for me in the episode is the very end when Tony goes out and is in the backyard and it's kind of contemplating the wind. And you have these very clear shots of the wind in the backyard. Mm -hmm. The ripples this, it has on the water. We get this cut to the Jason Polly thing. Yeah, and the trees we, moving in a Tony. similar yeah. way that we've seen, you know, like, going back to college, Tony with his, you know, first murder that we see, you know, going to Adriana, all these moments where there's been wind rustling through the trees. The difference is that Tony is actively contemplating it. Mm -hmm. He's actively looking at it. And for me, that's different because Tony has always kind of been surrounded by the wind. And w it's up to us to kind of decode it and think about how what the wind represents. But Tony is just acting in his own ways, violently, or dealing with the world. But now Tony's actually contemplating what the wind means, much like we have been mm -hmm. in the analysis of this show. So that's different. And it's some of the clearest shots of that symbol of that symbolism. Yeah, I just wonder, like, like what's Tony, like, what's Tony's interpretation, or like, what's our interpretation of the Ojibwe saying, and how is Tony interpreting it? Because I think there is something about, like I said, I wish I'd written it down, how he like misstates the quote when he's mm. talking about it with Polly. Right. And he does say, like, he he uses the terminology, and I can't, I should. You know, stop yeah. this if we were using a proper microphone and look it up. <laughs> but we can't. Um, we can't do that. Impossible. Um, but he says something about the wind is always behind you, pushing you along, mm -hmm. versus you have the actual thing written down Sometimes somewhere. I go about in pity for myself. The last part. And all the while, a great wind carries me across the sky. You're right. So this, like, this this imagery of like being carried across the sky versus being pushed right. along or something. Like I forget exactly how he says it. Um, but like, what is the function of this, you know, 
understanding of connectivity? Is it something that kind of lifts you up and carries you? Or is it something that's kind of like pushing you in these directions? And, right. Um, that's know, interesting. I do think it kind of does tie into like, you know, where am I going? These like paths of fate and stuff right. like that. Because like that concept, like the wind carrying you. Right. Or pushing you. I don't know. There's something there's, in that for me. For me, there's also like kind of the the lack of importance of going about and pity for yourself and the lack of recognition that something much larger is happening. The lack of recognition that human significance is just a postal stamp on the Empire State Building. Yeah. That it's not that important, that we are confined to our own perspective and it is the most important thing in the world to us because that's all we've ever experienced. But it's just one part of an entire universe and everything is connected and there are much greater forces at play than the individual worlds that we are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really relevant to the show on the whole. And I think that's why they spend so much time with that quote. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an amazing episode. I think it's an important episode. I think it really gets to the heart of what the show is. And it's a pleasure watching it and talking about it. Love it. Yeah. Um, I love it too. (laughs) I wish we didn't have to record this episode twice but that's okay <laughs> it's okay thanks pro tools uh, i won't go about in pity for myself if any of you work for pro tools and want to you know yeah do something for us that'd be nice yeah because you're making our life difficult um <laughs> yeah fix whatever bug that is yeah um we will be back we'll be back and uh i think it's mr and mrs john sacrimony request mm-hmm. next yeah. episode which is a great one yeah. We haven't seen a ton of Johnny Sack no. recently. No, we will. We get to see him next episode. But yeah, I just like, I don't know, for me what I'm left with is like really looking forward to tracking. Um, where Tony goes from here. Where Tony goes from here, but like also other instances where these philosophies show up right. for us. Because we, we've had them, like we, we always have them in this show. Yeah. But it's rare that we have so many of them. Like, often an episode will kind of be, like, focused around, like, a viewpoint, right? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking back to college, even, yeah. actually. Like, yeah. um, you know, with the religious aspects in that episode. We, we rarely kind of get to see, you know, kind of all these viewpoints encountering each other. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I look forward to kind of, like, unpacking that as, Absolutely. as, as the, um, this watch goes on. Yeah. So thank you for listening. Yeah. And we're looking forward to being back. If you've enjoyed the show, you can always rate us on iTunes. It helps people find it. We appreciate it. Or just email us. And or just email us and talk. We like talking about Sopranos yeah. too. Yeah. It's nice. And let us know what you think. Yeah. You can talk. How do you think Chris feels? What? That's not how he feels <laughs> about the poster stamp. I don't know. Anyways, think about that one. Think about what Chris feels. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Bye. Bye.